In this video I'm going to explain how I made this tree. This is for a set on a children's book I'm working on. So running through the tree I have this threaded rod here. I can use this to screw the entire tree to the table. Using a locking washer I could lock it onto the table pretty tight. And now I can spin the thing around 360 degrees which makes it really easy to sculpt. So a lot of my armatures start out with aluminum wire. It's a very flexible metal but it's also strong enough to provide some kind of structural support. This is a 1 32nd thickness and this is a 1 8th inch thickness and this is a 3 8 inch and then this big one over here this is a quarter inch thick. So when I'm making this tree I really just start uh, with the thick wire for the large branches um, you can see that wires down here uh, and then as I get up I go to a thinner wire and then to a thinner wire and then to the thinnest wire for the end or the tips of the branches. So I start with the quarter inch rods to block in the main branches and for now I'm just using glue sticks to hold everything into place until I get it exactly where I want it. So after I get the large branches in place, I'll go to the medium-sized wires and twist on some medium-sized branches. And then I just start moving down to the smaller wire as I get to the end of the branches. And I don't really have any kind of system at this point. I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. Uh, sometimes I'll start with the wire on the tree and twist up. Sometimes I'll twist little branches and then attach them to a, a larger branch. But I am trying to make sure that uh, they are always kind of twisted or tied or secured to the other wires. And then when I get it close to where I want it, I'll hit it with a hot glue gun. I like to use the industrial glue sticks here. They set up a lot faster and they just have a stronger bond. So here's the finished armature. Once I'm happy with the shape of the armature, I'll skin the entire thing with a clay called Magic Sculpt. This is a two part epoxy clay. You mix it up. Uh, you have about an hour working time to get it where you want it. Uh, and then in a couple of hours, it gets super hard. If you want to know more about this stuff, I have a video under Sculpture Tutorials that really gets into how this stuff works. What I mean by skinning it is that I'm just putting on a really thin layer that just covers the wires. After it hardens it'll keep that shape and then I can sculpt a second layer on top and carve in some detail. So it takes about 8 hours to completely set so here is what it looks like after the first layer. So with the drawing in the background I am trying to pay attention to the scale and the basic silhouette of the tree. Uh, I don't try to get super obsessive about matching it exactly. Uh, a lot of the times the materials will kind of dictate the shape um, and whenever you're taking something from uh, 2D into 3D uh, you got to give a little bit of latitude for things to change. Uh, you know and a lot of the times once I get to the final stages I'm really just making the final decisions based on uh, what I think looks good. So I pulled out a handful of things here that I've used before to make texture. Uh, some combs, this little wire brush, uh, this little wood rasp, and I'm just going to kind of figure out as I'm sculpting which one looks the best. So with the second layer of Magic Sculpt, I'm really just bulking the tree up a bit. I'm giving it a little bit more of an interesting shape, and then I'm going to be adding texture. I like to start at the top of the tree and work my way down and it's really just a process of taking little pieces of the magic sculpt and kind of corkscrewing it uh, clockwise and counterclockwise up and down the branches. This corkscrewing process will give it kind of a nice uh, twisting gnarled branch look. So for the texture the first thing I tried was the comb and then I tried the little metal brush and then I tried the uh, metal wood rasp, which was my obvious favorite. Uh, it just really left a nice, subtle, consistent texture, 
and the curve of the uh, the slight curve of the metal tip here made it really easy to get around all of the branches. I am constantly dipping my fingers in water. Uh, this keeps the clay soft and makes it easier to move around. Most of this work is all hand sculpted, but I will come in with some of the wood tools to uh, push things around a little bit. After the magic sculpt is mixed, there's kind of a 30 minute sweet spot to work with it before it starts to harden up a little bit. And that's not to say that's a bad thing when it starts to harden. Uh, sometimes it's actually easier to sculpt when it's a little hard. So it's just one of those materials uh, through trial and error where you start to figure out uh, the best way to work with it. So I just continued to mix up small amounts of the clay, twist it onto the tree, and then uh, carve in the texture. One thing you don't see here is I'm constantly cleaning the rasp uh, in a little bucket of water with a toothbrush. When this clay is first mixed, it's super sticky, so I just have to keep doing this, otherwise uh, all of the little teeth on the rasp get gummed up. So I want it to look like these branches uh, could have come off of this tree here. I'm not super obsessed with getting everything to look exact, but I do want it to look uh, somewhat close. The first coat is a wash over the entire tree using an ivory black. A wash just means I'm thinning it out with a little bit of water. The purpose of this first wash is to really kind of accentuate the shadows, so it's really important that the paint really get into all the recessed areas which is easy to do if it's thinned out with some water. I also do this in little sections at a time. I want to make sure that the paint doesn't dry out because I'm going to be patting or blotting it with a, a rag to kind of uh, emphasize the highlights and the shadows. So I just keep doing this in little sections until the entire tree is done. And then I'll go back and hit some areas again if I think that they can use uh, a little bit more dark. Most of the things I paint start out with a black or Payne's gray wash. Somewhere on my channel there's a painting tutorial where I really get into all the details concerning washes. And for a project like this where it's a set that I know is going to be photographed, high contrast is always something that's important. So these black washes will really help push the uh, dark end of the value scale. So here's the tree after the first uh, base layer of ivory black. And the effect I was really trying to achieve with the wash and patting it with the cloth is that the parts that did not get padded, like the recessed areas and the bottoms um, and all this detail in here, that stays nice and dark where the paint uh, kind of pooled in. Uh, you can see it's still a little wet, but what that does is really accentuate uh, all those little shadow areas there. 
This branch is a really nice example uh, of a successful wash. You can see on some of the top areas, uh, it's already just a little highlighted. Um, and down in these areas, it's a little bit darker. So it really just helps to uh, define the silhouette as well. Um, and after I finished the entire piece, I actually went back uh, with the black paint and kind of cheated in some uh, more shadows. So I came in with the black paint and I came in here, hit this a little bit, hit this a little bit back here. I put a little bit more in there. Um, underneath this entire branch here, I hit that with a little black uh, as well as this here. And this is just based on the fact that I know uh, the silhouette will be something like this. So I'm just looking to kind of add more shadows uh, into these areas here that will actually uh, have shadow. So the next wash is going to be with this burnt umber. Uh, this is a fluid acrylic, so it is already a little bit transparent. It's a thinner paint and I'm going to be adding water to it. So it's going to make it very transparent. So I'm doing the same thing as the first wash, I'm just painting it on in little sections and then patting it off with a rag. The great thing about washes is that you can just keep going over it again and again with different colors and really building up uh, some nice color variation as well as some nice textures. It's important to let your wash completely dry before you put another layer on top. Otherwise I've noticed sometimes the under layer can peel away. I actually ended up using a lot less water here than I thought uh, just because the fluid acrylics are already so thin. So it just adds a slight tint of brown to the tree and kind of cuts the contrast uh, of the black just a little bit. Um, it's so subtle you might not even end up seeing it after all the dry brushing's done, uh, but it's just building up one more layer that might look, make it look a little bit cooler. And then one final color that I'm going to add to the uh, base layers of washes is this yellow ochre. I'm actually going to throw it down on the same palette as the brown here. Uh, I don't really care if it mixes in a little bit. This is going to be a very watery wash. I'm just going to start at the top and put it on very heavy and very wet and just let it kind of drip down over the tree. And then after it runs a little bit, I'm going to take the uh, cotton rag and just kind of dab it the same way that I did with the previous washes. And in some spots where I want a little bit more color, I'll just take a paintbrush and, and dab a little bit more into those areas. I really like this uh, drippy wash technique because it gives it a very organic and natural look. Almost like the same pattern that rain might take uh, if it were dripping down a tree and then maybe uh, collecting in some areas where uh, grass or moss might grow, which might give it a little bit of natural color. And even though a lot of this will probably be covered up with the dry brushing, it still just gives one more uh, little bit of color variation and, and different texture. So here's my color palette for the dry brushing part of the tree. Uh, I have a black and a white, and then a couple colors that will add a little bit of uh, tint of yellow to it. I have a yellow ochre here, and a bleached uh, titanium white here. Uh, and then I have silver right here. I feel like those colors will get me pretty close to uh, this branch that I'm trying to match. So now it's just a matter of figuring out uh, where to put the paint and how much to put on. The first dry brush layer is just going to be titanium white. Uh, before I start adding a bunch of colors, just having one even coat of white will kind of let me know uh, what the tree is going to look like in terms of uh, the shadows. Dry brushing just means that your paint brush is dry and there's very little paint on it. And what you're doing is you're really just dusting the brush across the uh, surface of the piece and really just laying down a, a very light highlight of color. So after I load a little bit of paint on the brush, you can see that I'm just really trying to brush most of it off on the palette here. And then just a really quick fanning of the brush across the entire piece. This big fluffy brush here is a watercolor brush that's used for washes. 
It works great for dry brushing, but it is kind of a pain to, to keep clean. I'm constantly washing this brush uh, just because it is a little bit delicate. If I'm not using the watercolor wash brushes, I'm just using the uh, large filbert acrylic brushes. I really like the filberts with the round edges because it really just helps to uh, blend the dry brushing in. So it's a great technique uh, for picking up all the texture uh, because really you're just coloring the texture on top and all the little recessed areas are going to keep the color of paint that was underneath it. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to dry brush a little bit of this uh, silver on top. And I'm also going to use one of these fat wash brushes. The little branch that I'm trying to match is kind of a matte silver. So this final dusting of uh, silver just kind of puts it a little bit closer to that color palette. And with all of these highlight washes, I'm really just trying to dust the front of the piece. This just helps to emphasize the dark edges of the silhouette and um, kind of cheat some shadows in there in a similar manner that that first uh, wash with the black was doing. So this is after all the paints dried and this is about as far as I'm going to take it. One thing I've realized is that you never really know how something looks until you see it in front of camera. Um, so. As soon as I put it on set with all the other elements in the background, then I'll really be able to see if I need to uh, lighten or darken it up. My first impression is that overall it is pretty dark, but it's always easier to lighten a piece. And in the big picture, this tree is kind of supposed to be dead, so I don't want it to be super bright and colorful. And while the branches are a more uniform uh, matte silver color, I do think that it looks like that they could have come off of this tree, especially in terms of silhouette. So that's pretty much it for the tree. Uh, you could check out a few other videos on my channel here that show how the rest of this set was built. And if you like the video, I would definitely appreciate it if you could like it or share it or even leave a comment. Basically all of that stuff helps YouTube's algorithm push it out to a wider audience. Thanks for watching and I will see you later. Don't 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 don